Welcome to another Founder Wisdom Pod. We have David Lizerbram with us. He's owner at David Lizerbram and Associates, so a law firm. We're going to talk about David's background. He used to have a pod and another company, so quite the entrepreneur. He's quite used to being on podcasts, and I, I should say. This pod is presented to you by Podfire. Talking about podcasts, podfire.com is my company to help you scale your podcast, go to the next level, and monetize your podcasting activities. David, welcome to the pod. Tell me a bit more about yourself and what you're up to nowadays. Uh, yeah, well, I, I appreciate the opportunity to be here. I'm always happy to jump on a show and, and uh, talk to folks about business matters, whatever. I'm an attorney here in San Diego, California. I've been practicing law since 2002. And all I've ever done uh, in my legal career is work with business owners, entrepreneurs, investors, creative people, et cetera, um, who are forming businesses, launching products and services, buying and selling businesses. Um, you know, sort of, a, I'm not the kind of lawyer who fights. I don't go to court. <laughs> I'm only here to help people, um, you know, sort of achieve their dreams, uh, whether that's in business and helping their family or whatever it is they want to do. And I'm very privileged to, to be able to have that be my career. What uh, problems do founders and startup owners face nowadays? They come to see you and they're like, David, I have this problem. How can you help me? Yeah, there's a lot of pain points for people who are founding businesses. And it could be one person starting a business. Um, it could be a side business. It could be a full-time business. It could be multiple people, seasoned entrepreneurs, so obviously every situation is different. Um, you know, if you've had successful exits and you've been, you know, launching companies for decades, you know, your needs might be a little bit different than somebody who's really in a new early bootstrapping phase in their first kind of round. <laughs> um, and, and as you know, most um, people who are founders or entrepreneurs, um, the first thing they try doesn't always uh, become the biggest uh, success. And and it's obviously, uh, you know, just staying in there and keeping at it is is a big factor. So um, it could be really straightforward things um, like uh, brand names. I do a lot of work with that brand names, business names, learning what you need to know so that, you know, what you don't want to do is launch your business and say, hey, I've got this great product. I've got this great service, whatever it is. And then all of a sudden you get a cease and desist letter from another mean lawyer like me <laughs> saying, hey, you can't use that name. You can't use that logo, whatever it is. Um, so that is often a thing of educating people. It's not just, um, you know, checking a box or something. It's really, I need to work with the founder or founders and educate them. Hey, here's what you need to know. Here's what people don't know that gets them into trouble. These are the right steps to take. Um, it's not my job to tell people what to do to run their business. It's, you know, my job to give people the information um, that they can use to make the right executive decision. So that might be an issue. Honestly, um, you know, another issue really is when you're dealing with multiple people, whether it's multiple partners, people going in together on a venture, whatever it may be, um, you know, really making sure that all the details have been figured out. Because, you know, I'm sure that when you get an idea for a business or product or something new, a new venture, whatever it is you want to do, you're really excited. And that's great. I love the enthusiasm. And that's one of the most rewarding things in my job is getting to work with enthusiastic people that just can't wait to get that thing that they've thought of in their head out into the world. Um, but, you know, part of my job is to slow things down just a little bit and say, okay, have we worked through all the details? Do we know who's going to be doing what? What happens if somebody leaves? What happens if, unfortunately, something happens to one of these founders or partners? You know, people, things happen to people in this world. Um, I'm sure we all know. Um, so have we thought this through um, how we're going to deal with eventualities or things that may occur, or if there's a disagreement, how do we resolve that, et cetera. Working all those things out so everybody knows what their role is, what the understanding is, what the options are, et cetera. The more things that like that are worked out and put on paper ahead of time, uh, which doesn't always have to be with a lawyer, but it is part of my job to facilitate those conversations. Um, you know, the more people feel confident going forward. Okay, I know what I'm supposed to do. I know what my partner is going to be doing. I know what my uh, you know, the other person I'm working with, an affiliate, whatever it may be. I know what they're going to do. I know what I have to do. And we're both going to deliver and, you know, things are going to move forward. It's it's when I have an idea in my head, you have a different idea in your head. We haven't talked it through. We're both 
sort of excited and we're working on the stuff where that's fun, <laughs> um, but haven't gotten down to those nitty gritty details. That's where things can kind of fester and become a problem down the line. AIs, uh, do they make good lawyers? AIs? Sure, yeah. Just go to ChatGPT. Why would you ever hire a lawyer? All <laughs> right. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not, uh, I'm not, I, I don't have anything negative to say about any kind of solutions. I think um, if you're a business owner at whatever level, you have to use whatever is out there to help you. Um, that doesn't mean you should rely on the advice of a computer or Google or ChatGPT or Claude or any of these um, necessarily uh, the way you would rely on the advice of an attorney. Um, because if you get sued, being able to say, well, my attorney advised X and this is what I did. And then you can see it. Um, is going to put you in a different position than, well, I typed it into a box and the box told me this is what to do. Maybe in the future, that'll be different. But this is the world we're living in as we record today, you know, March 7, 2024. Um, that said, all, all these tools are valuable and useful and different things are appropriate for different people at different stages. So an online service might be helpful um, for somebody who's just at a really early starting stage and doesn't have a lot of capital and just has to, uh, you know, get their you know, minimum viable product off the ground. And then once things get rolling along, maybe then at that point, they engage an attorney to maybe clean a few things up, get on the right track. I don't have a judgment about that. I don't think it's necessarily bad or good. Use whatever's out there, but don't assume that, oh, you know, I looked it up. I, you know, I, I typed it into a box and the answer came out and I know exactly what I'm doing. It's always a learning process. And um, so I don't, I'm not here to speak badly about any, any options or any, Thing you need to do to get your business going but are there these ai tools sold to law firms that allow them to get to potential past cases and jurisprudence uh quicker rather than uh searching and uh taking a lot of time to get an answer to case yeah i mean the current issue of course is hallucination right so you know and that hasn't been solved to this point maybe at some point somebody will be listening to this podcast and that problem's already been solved i'm not an ai developer or engineer so um but at this point as we're recording today the issue is hallucinations meaning if i went into let's say chat gpt um and said oh what's you know give me some cases to explain this issue that my client is having i might get good information i might get information that's totally made up um, it's my job then to double check, you know, review all those cases, look at them and say, wait, okay, this one is good. This one is correct. I hadn't thought of that. That's a good idea. And this one is totally nonsense. <laughs> it's completely made up. It doesn't even exist. And that's the world we're dealing with today. Um, so I, everybody, you know, sh I, I mean, should use whatever's available. I use those tools sometimes just to get my mind going, think about things maybe I hadn't thought of, um, you know, put things into a certain order or, or organization if I've got a bunch of different things I'm sorting out. Um, but I never rely on it at this point because they are unfortunately just not reliable in terms of delivering accurate information, you know, from a legal standpoint. So you always have to double check whether you're an attorney or, um, you know, just a, just a founder trying to learn something, um, you know, but again, they're useful tools. How do you split your time nowadays between the business, the speaking appearances and everything you're up to? Uh, let's see. I mean, I I don't know. <laughs> I've had my own business for 19 years, um, so it's a long time. So I'm just kind of used to that rhythm. Um, every day is different. Um, I, you know, when I have the opportunity to speak, whether it's on a podcast or on a, you know, in-person panel or whatever it is, um, I try to take that opportunity. Um, and you know, I've got a wife, I've got a seven-year-old, <laughs> I've got, uh, friends and family. I've got a lot of other things going on in my life. I've got a few other podcasts and things that I do sort of for fun. Um, and, uh, you know, so I don't know, it's, it's, I don't, I don't really think about it, um, in a strategic way, um, because it's really become very organic to me at this point. I'm, I've seen you on various, uh, income report uh, for EO Fire. Uh, how did that came about and what was your experience with John? Oh, I've known John Lee Dumas and Kate for, God, I don't know, 10 years, maybe a long time. We met in person here. At, they used to live here in San Diego where I live in California. Um, and we met at an event um, just kind of randomly. Um, I think maybe he was on a panel or something and we started talking 
And um, we just kind of hit it off as friends, really. Um, they're just nice folks. And um, I, you know, sort of became their attorney um, and have worked with them for years. And so, you know, over time, John and Kate, um, you know, were nice enough to invite me to to speak on their podcast. And I've done it every other month for, again, I don't know, seven years, a long time, um, just providing legal tips and things like that. Um, it's a great audience, um, really nice folks. And, uh, you know, I mean, really one of my core missions, I guess, is I have information in my head about that's helpful to business owners, right? I mean, that's my job, right? <laughs> um, and, um, you know, obviously it's my jo you know job. People pay me <laughs> to do legal work and that's, I'm happy people do that. But I also just want to make as much information out available out there for business owners, entrepreneurs, people who are founders starting things um, so that they can, you know, get off the ground. And um, so having the opportunity to communicate to John and Kate's audience or your audience, you know, it's just, uh, I don't want to make it more than it is, but it's, it's providing that education and information. And, um, and so it's, it's, it's really nice. They're great folks. They have their new baby and um, I'm really happy for them for all the success they've had. And, um, you know, spreading a positive message in the world is a good thing. I see you're foodie. Uh, you like spending time with uh, your wife and children. Uh, how do you actually recharge your battery and make sure you're productive at the office? Yeah, it's all the above. I mean, exercise, do you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, and spending time with friends and family, pretty simple things in, in this world. Um, you know, I focusing on the things I love, music, movies, uh, um, you know, things that I've always been very passionate about. I have a podcast about uh, music documentaries, which is a very small niche subject. Um, but it's something that I love and uh, I do it with a friend and we've done, I don't know, a hundred episodes, or something like that. <laughs> um, it's not a paid thing. Uh, we do it actually to sponsor another music website that we like uh, and we're, we just do it to help them. Um, and um, then my, I have a podcast with my seven-year-old son about baseball. He loves baseball and he will just talk about every thing in baseball all day long. So he wanted to have his own podcast. He heard podcasts. Um you know, sometimes we're in the car, we'll listen to somebody said, can I have my own podcast? And I said, why not? You know, he was six at the time. Um, and, you know, I, I like that because it's why not? You know, just because you're six, you can do whatever you want, you know. Um, so we started that. So we do that every two weeks. Um, and uh, that's called Little Slugger. If anybody likes baseball <laughs> and you want to hear a seven year old give his uh, very, uh, very detailed opinions. <laughs> it's out there. Um, they're 10 minute episodes, so they're pretty easy to digest. But you know, just fun stuff like that. I coach baseball, um, really uh, basic stuff like that. Uh, you know, it's, um, again, I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel or come up with something uh, that everybody hasn't done. I have different business ideas and things I'm working on on my end. Um, but uh, I don't know, just spending time with people, especially after, I mean, I know it seems like a long time ago almost now, but COVID, you know, after we, a lot of people spent, you know, a year or, or more um, without really socializing, it just reminded everybody, um, I think, of the value of of those in-person connections, you know, and sometimes it turns into business opportunities and things like that. And sometimes it's just fun. But, um, you know, it's it's important. And that's what life's about, I think. So you're quite vocal also about Israel and Hamas. Uh, how can we fix that situation? <laughs> well, why don't you give me some easy questions first? <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. You're warmed up, are you? I wish I knew, you know, I could run for president or something. I don't know. If I knew, I would tell you. Um, I've spent a lot of time in Israel uh, in my life, and I think that's, I'm very fortunate to have had that opportunity. Um, I'm, you know, very supportive of the people uh, of Israel. And of course, I, you know, all, I don't want harm to come to anybody. Um, there's places in the world where there are complex situations. And if I knew the solutions to, you know, North Korea or Hamas, or my wife is from Iran. Um, and so that's a difficult situation as well. We'd love to go back and visit Iran, but unfortunately we can't. Um, hoping that changes as well. All I can do is do my little part here, you know, but, um, uh, you know, my, my focus right now is, um, you know, I want to, I want to see the hostages come home and, um, you know, get to a peaceful uh, resolution for everybody. And how are you making your little part, as you mentioned? Uh, in terms of what? 
you just mentioned that I'm, I just want to focus on doing my little part. So what is that little part? What actions are you taking personally, micro actions to better the world? Oh, well, you know, I, I'm very much, um, I, I've become really focused on my, my local community. I think um, people that are online um, a lot and uh, sometimes see the problems of the world, whether that's the Middle East or global warming or Ukraine or something else, anything, um, and it becomes overwhelming. What can I do to stop, you know, all these problems in the world? And of course, there's things that people can do about all these things. And, and if you're, you know, in a position of power or influence, great. Um, but I also feel like we can't forget about things locally, whether it's, you know, helping one person locally. I know it seems like almost a cliche, but, um, you know, my wife and I, we volunteer in our own local community and um, try to do things to help um, people that we that we see, that we know, um, and, you know, make our neighborhood better, make our community better, create opportunities for more housing. Um, and, um, you know, that is a big need that we have here. Um, working on making the streets safer for um, bike infrastructure and things like that. We're big on um, bike safety. So, you know, it might not be uh, AGI. It may not be um, solving the Middle East <laughs> um, and, and, you know, it'd be great to, to solve all those problems. But um, it, it is really rewarding to try to work to see something positive in your own community and then see it happen. And um, whether it's for kids for, or people in need, whatever it is, and, and that does kind of give you that immediate reward when working on something that's, I don't know, global, it's hard to see the impact, you know? So I, I think maybe, I guess you have to do both, but um, that's what we're focused on. And this year, your top three business objectives, what would they be? My top three business objectives? Well, I mean, my business objectives sometimes have been the same. Very concretely, I would say, and this is, you know, again, not uh, so, such a big deal, but, um, you know, I, 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 when I started my business, I wanted to work with people that were doing positive things. Um, that doesn't mean everything is, you know, going to save the world. It could just be creating a small business that helps support your family. Um, and, and I like the opportunity to do that. So continue to do that, I would say. Um, on a very nuts and bolts level, um, you know, I have to get paid for what I do. And I, one of the things that I try to do is never to have a situation where I send people an invoice at the end of the month and they're not happy about it. Um, so a lot of people have that complaint about lawyers, you know, they can't afford it or they get a bill and they don't know what it's for or, you know, whatever. I mean, especially for a startup, a, a young business, you know, economics are very important and cash flow is important. Um, so making sure that I'm keeping that dialogue open where, you know, I'm very clear about fees and everything. Again, it seems like a very small, simple thing, but I just think a lot of lawyers and other professionals may not always do that. Um, so I try to focus on that. And the third one is a project that I'm working on that is not ready to be revealed yet. And I don't know if it's going to happen, but, um, I do like to have a, an entrepreneurial venture cooking. Um, so we'll see, we'll see if that one comes, but, uh, that one's, a a little bit of a uh, surprise at the moment. Great secret. Um, where can people find out more about you, Dave? Oh, uh, I I have a website, lizardbramlaw.com. Um, there's only one David Lizardbram in the world. So if you type it in Google, anything close to my name, you'll get it. <laughs> uh, you don't have to spell it exactly right, but it's liz lizardbramlaw.com. I have hundreds of blog posts up there. Uh, um, that I've written for over 10 years, um, explaining things as simply as I can for business owners, entrepreneurs, whether it's about contracts, forming businesses, trademarks, copyrights, all kinds of different issues. Um, and I try to really have them be not written for other lawyers. You know, uh, I do have other lawyers who read it, which is great, but um, it's really written for to be actionable information as simple as possible for busy business owners that are just trying to move forward and get their, you know, get their stuff off the ground. So I've got hundreds of blog posts up there uh, categorized for, for that. I've got other resources, podcasts, and other things um, to try to help explain things for people. So um, that's, that's really where I usually direct people because I've just been building that resource library for so many years. And fortunately people find it helpful. So um, that's uh that's where I would send people.